for hypertrophy, I learned from Andy that the repetition range can be pretty broad. You think anywhere from pick three exercises, compound exercises, multi-joint uh, movements, do them for, do three to five exercises for three to five repetitions per set, rest three to five minutes, and do that three to five times per week. People who are training mostly for strength can do these low rep type regimens frequently because most of the adaptation is neural. And because you're not pushing to failure in most cases, you don't get that sore. And so it's the motor neurons getting the muscle fibers to contract more intensely or with more efficiency in other ways that's leading to these strength gains. And this is why power lifters can train every day or five days a week or four days a week. For hypertrophy, I learned from Andy that the repetition range can be pretty broad. You think anywhere from six to 30 repetitions, you should do 10 sets per muscle group per week, maybe even a bit more, but you have to go to failure or beyond in order to stimulate growth. Why does it work at such a great range of repetitions? Well, there apparently are three ways that you stimulate hypertrophy and maybe more. One is tissue micro damage to the tissue. The other is through some sort of tension based changes in the molecular gene programs of cells that lead to protein synthesis that don't, that are distinct from damage. And the other are metabolic effects of like high repetition work of superfusion of the muscle with blood. We know that third category exists because people are now doing this blood restriction training where they cuff off a muscle and they'll use a really light weight. I've done these before. You can use a five pound weight and do curls with this and you're, you are in pain and the muscles are swelling up with blood. It does lead to hypertrophy, but in general, you're not sore. You're not doing tissue damage. And by the way, don't just tourniquet it off a muscle because you have to use the proper cuffs um, because you need the blood still to flow in one direction. You can't just cinch it off or you'll, you'll potentially kill yourself if you um, get a clot or you do it wrong. So get the appropriate cuffs. They're out there. And then for endurance, I learned something really cool. So I, I work out basically, I go to the gym every other day on average, I, three or four days a week. I do that, but generally not two days in a row. It's workout next day. I'll do cardio next day. And the cardio for me is always a 30 to 45 minute jog kind of zone two cardio. Andy informed me that to build endurance while building strength and maintaining some muscle size or even building muscle size, I would be wise to take one day a week and add to that all out max heart rate work for 90 seconds at least. So do 90 seconds, then rest, and then maybe do another 90 second all out sprint. It actually has some carryover effects on, on endurance. If you're doing the other stuff, run a mile, you ask yourself, how long did that take? Let's say it took eight minutes. Then you walk or rest for eight minutes. Then you run another mile as fast as you can. And then you rest for the equivalent period. And you do that one to three times once per week. So you do, and so as an all around fitness program, it may, you could collapse this into something where you say, okay, you're going to work out with the weights for about an hour every other day. Maybe take two days off every once in a while. Maybe not. You're going to do six to 15 repetitions. You're going to push to failure on some of those, not all, because some of those are designed to build more strength. You're not going to failure and heavier. Some are designed for hypertrophy, higher rep and going to failure. And then on off days, you're going to jog for 30 or 45 minutes. But for two days a week, you're either at the end of your jog or whatever, you're going to do some all out sprints for 90 seconds and then rest and repeat. And for another day, you're going to do these mile repeats. That's a pretty, that's a pretty large chunk of exercise movement. But if you kind of thread through the middle of all that, what you end up with is some decent strength building protocols, some decent hypertrophy, some cardiovascular training that establishes the so-called a base or a so-called base. So you're not going to get really good at anything. You're not going to become a marathoner this way an optimizing marathon. You're not going to optimize powerlifting. You're not going to optimize hypertrophy, but for the typical person, 75% of people, 75% of the time, they want some muscle, they want some strength, they want some endurance, and they want the capacity to sprint to the, to the security gate without, um, you know, leaving a lung in the terminal. Avoid cold immersion. So ice baths and being in cold water up to the neck, uncomfortably cold within the four hours after a, a, training session that's designed to evoke an adaptation, either endurance, hypertrophy, or strength. After four hours, you're probably okay, but 
If you can do it a different day or you can do it before those sessions, that's better. Heat, however, can be done immediately after training and it's probably beneficial because of the way that it dilates the vascular system and delivers, perfuses the muscles and ligaments, et cetera, with more nutrients.